Stanford University. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Christopher Gardner. I'm an associate professor of medicine at Stanford University at the Stanford Prevention Research Center and the proud organizer of this amazing event that we're going to have today. 500 people registered. You're not all here yet, but thanks for coming early this morning. Okay, am I already off this thing? No, he's fixing it for me. So uh, while we're fixing the slides, uh, we're going to have very brief introductions today because we have a lot of fabulous speakers. They are so fabulous it would take up the whole time just to introduce them. So to spare you that, on the tables are brief introductions of all the fabulous speakers we have. There's programs on your tables. And as well, if you go to the website, there's more extensive uh, bios and links to all the things that these people do. They do so many things we couldn't even list them on the poster. It's amazing. I'd also like to point out that last year, we had the good fortune of having this fall right on Food Day, and this year we're a little off. But we would like to acknowledge Food Day from the Center for Science and Public Interest, which was last week. I'd like to acknowledge the generous support we got from the deans of the university so to show how widespread this support is. The provost for the fourth year in a row gave us a big chunk of change, thanks to him and the Woods Institute and the Neutralite Health Institute. Probably most importantly, these four women. Last year, Antonella and Josephine pretty much ran it on their own. This year, Josephine and Aaron jumped in. So if you could give a round of applause for hundreds, hundreds of hours of emails and updates. All right, and then beyond those four, there's a whole team of people. And they have, a lot of them have cute t-shirts if you need help. It has Food Summit. And on the back, it says our logo. So if you need help, there's some uh, helpers running around to help direct you. Right? And a lot of other people on this slide. I'll leave it up there just for a minute. And we have a graphics person, a communications person. We've got all the events people, uh, the sponsors. We have a whole program committee that helped put this thing together and find all the speakers. So we need to thank all of them. So this morning's program is pretty much the main event. And we have three main categories of talks. We're going to start with an amazing keynote speech by Arlen Wasserman. And we're going to close with Michael Bacher. I am practicing Michiel um, uh, at the end. But in the middle, we have a critical mass of people who do farming and food production. Daniel and Tony, I hope you're here, because you weren't mic'd when I walked up here. So I hope Daniel uh, make it to the back. Yeah? All right. Daniel and Tony. Oh, good. All right. Thanks so much. Um, then we have a cooking and food procurement set of talks. Then we have a food entrepreneurship. And then Mahil will kick it off or, or close us off. At that point, lunch almost starts, but not quite. So we are going to force you all to network a little bit first and go to the other end of the building where we have a showcase of community tables and student research posters. So if you can see the lag between the start of the showcase and the start of lunch, that's intentional to make you walk down to the other side and schmooze and meet people before you start lunch. Okay? And then in the afternoon, we have some amazing panels as well. These are much more interactive. Unfortunately, in the morning, there aren't really time for questions. So the morning is like a series of TED-like talks, 10 minutes. I'm the taskmaster. They're going to stand up here. There's a yellow light. There's a red light. I'm going to make them sit down so that we stay on time. The afternoon, there's room for interactive discussions about these topics in the back. Now, we've got a problem. We are the victims of our own success. We've done an afternoon program every year, and we've never really filled it. This year, according to the survey, about 270 of you filled out. We actually don't have enough seats for everyone in the afternoon program. They are packed. So the back side of the building doesn't have as many seats as we have here. So if you weren't hell-bent on attending that, you might want to sit out or stand in the back. Um, a couple of the rooms will accommodate everyone, but sadly, not all of them. Now, all of the panels will be featured twice. They'll be featured once at 2.30 and again at 3.30 with a 15-minute break in between. Uh, but a lot of these folks are. Um, Stanford alum and Stanford Connections. Uh, this is the chance to talk to them about what they do in their job and be more interactive. So we thought that would match well with this morning where you don't get a chance to ask questions. Sorry. So really some fabulous speakers, a lot of friends, a lot of new people that we've been meeting. Tonight, we're showing a place at the table. 
uh, in Hewlett Hall. And after that, we will have a panel discussion with two academics and two community members. So it really goes from 9 a.m. till 9.30 by the time the panel finishes speaking. So if anybody's in there for the long haul, they're going to do the whole day with us. We'll be psyched to have you. But participate as much as you want. Uh, this year, we're going to try a new thing. I don't know if it's going to work. We sent out an announcement. There's a TAC board for community members offering an internship and a TAC board for students who want an internship. So we thought maybe we could make some matches while you guys are all here. Uh, we, are have the, we do have some snacks, but if you don't get enough food, there's a great alumni cafe down the hall. So here at Food Summit 4, our objective is to continue building this learning community that we've been working on for four years. We've been connecting the seven schools of Stanford, lots of interdisciplinary programs, um, lots of community partners that are offering internships and other ways to connect students. And, and what are we trying to accomplish? Well, we, even though we've been doing this for four years, we didn't solve the obesity epidemic yet, and we still have food insecurity. And there's an amazing overlap. There's a lot of people who are food insecure who are overweight. And, it's really not just a calorie question. We really have a lot of issues. And, and I know you're all foodies. That's why you're here. So I know you know what these issues are. And our, our goal is to set something up here to drive some change. And that's why you're in great company, because the people we've invited today are the changers. These are the ones who are making the solutions. So for this broken food system, what are we going to do? Well. Today's summit actually kind of follows up on this report that came out, the Seuss report, where they looked at undergraduate education and they said, oh, let, let's do some novel educational things. And these are some of the names of the novel educational things. And one category was helices. And a, a helix, in educational terms, as if you imagine the coils of the helix wrapping around and again, every time you come around again, you approach the same theme from a different discipline or a different lens. And so our uh, VPUE, Harry Elam, put up some money. And he said, who wants you know, some help with this? We'll put you in faculty college for a year so you can develop something. And we proposed a food helix, and it got accepted. So a whole team of us from the law school, the D school, dining, uh, Haas Center, Earth Systems, and me, and then Matt Ross switched, and he went over to the D school. He left dining. We worked on this for a year, and we got lots of student input, and in the end, we created this cluster of classes, anthropology, human biology, earth systems, and drama, all getting at food in a different direction. And when we went back, we showed the students. We said, we did it. We got all your feedback, and we made this cluster of intentionally integrated classes. And after working on it for a year and getting their feedback, what they said was, well, you know, really what we want are jobs, actually. So. <laughs> Wait, that we're in the ivory tower. We have this intellectually inspiring liberal art thing ready for you. This, well, could, could there actually be some practical aspects of this? Could there be jobs for us? So it was right about this time that we were trying to figure out what the theme of Food Summit 4 would be. Every year, we've changed the theme. So this year's theme is Growing Pathways to Careers in Food Systems. So we have pulled in a lot of people who work in really diverse areas of the food systems. And that's what you're going to hear about today, is how many different disciplines come to bear to address the broken food system problem, which was all helped when the Stanford uh, Magazine issue, July, August, came out. And it was the food issue. Anybody see the food issue? Oh my god, it was so great. So if you haven't seen it, go online. The Stanford food issue featured about 25 faculty, or uh, sorry, alums, students who went on to work in the food space, even though quite a few of them never intended to. And a lot of those you'll hear about today. And they're going to tell you, I hope, speakers, this is what you're supposed to say, is sort of how, what circuitous route brought you to food. We also have an interesting program now where we're hooking up to community partners through a uh, Stanford Health for America program. So four of us in the Stanford Prevention Research Center are teaching classes, hooking in a post-bac program, hooking students up to community partners. So at the end of the day, we have a big, hairy, audacious idea. What is it? It is that we should have a center on campus, an interdisciplinary center on campus that does this in a more formal way and hooks up people. And our vision would be that this would be a world-class, multidisciplinary research and education program. 
That is our big, hairy, audacious idea. And Howard, who I saw in the middle already, is the founding funder of this. We have one very generous alumni who kicked us off. We now have a fund. We have a SCRFS fund. I know it's a horrible acronym. Sounds like Smurfs, S-C-E-R-F-S. But we're working on maybe another name. Anyway, Howard is the founding father, and that's what we're working on. And so today, we are going to continue to build this direction toward this interdisciplinary center. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.